Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with gameplay review number 14, where I take your gameplay submitted to me and give you tips and tricks on how you can perform better in online matchmaking. Today we're looking at a neutral flag CTF game on the map Exile submitted by Groms, and this is over a 15 minute gameplay, so I'm not going to be pausing it at all. I'm just going to be commentating over it to save time and to make sure that I don't make a 40 minute video. Off the start here, Groms, pretty good job going for the flag meleeing the enemy guy, grabbing the flag, and making sure that your flag carry gets back to your base. But you need to go for the saw that is on your right, and go for the sticky data detonator that is in the window. You don't need to be hanging down this bottom position um, on the flag spawn. Wait for your teammate to cap it. You want to hold higher positions and wait for your teammate to cap. As it is, you're taken out very easily here as you get really distracted with this guy running back the mongoose back to your base. He's not really a threat because you already have a teammate back at the base, as you can see here. They both cleaned up that guy. You need to be ru going towards the center of the map, not rushing back to your base. In fact, your team really has trouble with this. You need to be going towards the center of the map, and you did just get three-shotted via lag, which is unfortunate. Like, I did three-shot you with a battle rifle. That happens sometimes when lag occurs. It looks like he only fires three shots. He actually fires, fires four. Uh, and you need to have grabbed that saw that was inside your base. But anyway, moving on to the commentary, they have the Goss Hog on top of the objective bridge, and you need to be getting, uh, trying to get on top of the wreckage as your teammate right here on the right does, okay? Your teammate right here does, and he's above this guy, and he's doing a really good job, but he gets beam rifled, unfortunately. And you're kind of putting long range shots. You need to be going to the right here, pushing up and jumping on top of the wreckage to get some cover. You can always drop behind the wreckage and um, kind of get some cover here. But these guys are charging from Banshee Window. That guy deflects the sticky detonator, which barely doesn't kill you, but you do get cleaned up. Nice double. And your teammate is once again on top of wreckage, taking advantage of, of the opening you made for him. He's really trying to stay alive here. Notice the angle he's using, but unfortunately he gets goss hogged by the cost hog gunner who just fell out of the banshee window. This guy's giving you a lot of trouble. Fortunately, you just get cleaned up by a bunch of people out here in the center, and your teammates really need to start firing on these guys in the center of the map. You just saw your teammate rush back into the base to where your flag carrier is. That's really not necessary. And you get really confused here. I don't think you know where the flag is. It's below your base, okay? You kind of barely survive here. Then try to drop down the lift tunnel, which uh, that's not going to help you. Or you drop, try to drop on top of the lift. That's not going to happen. You do kind of miss a melee here, almost protect your teammate, but after getting that kill, you need to be focusing on the guys in the center of the map right here, putting a lot of shots in them, and I like how you push out to the left here, try to get an alternate angle of fire after they put a few shots on you, but you don't need to really reload here. This guy gets way too close to you. You need to be trying to put fire into these people long before they reach your base, trying to suppress them, and if you don't uh, suppress them. In other words, if they don't back down, you need to be killing them. You're charging out to the into the center of the map, man, but thankfully you do back down because you realize you're not going to get that flag. You end up getting a very lucky grenade kill on this guy. I wouldn't have thrown that grenade. I would have backed up and tried to get out of the situation while peppering them with some fire. But you do end up getting a grenade kill and assist with it, which is pretty lucky. And then you're going to go for the sticky detonator. You don't need to go all this roundabout route to the sticky detonator. You could have just charged straight up the ramp from your base on the side here. There's no need to pause here for this long. Your sticky detonator is not going to kill anybody here. Uh, this guy just saw you grab a sticky detonator and has seen multiple dots on this radar. He's not going to push up. And frankly, right here, you do a questionable play. You wait in Banshee window, window for the enemy team to grab the flag. And let me recap here. For those of you who don't know, in neutral flag... The reason why neither team has capped the flag yet is because they want to maintain control of the flag respawn area, which is below Banshee Window where uh, Groms is standing right now. So, what you have to understand is that if the enemy team caps the flag right now, Groms' team, red team, will get the flag because they have central control. Notice how his teammates are all, all in front of him, and Groms is sitting in Banshee Window waiting for the flag to be capped. The unfortunate part about this strategy is that Groms has a sticky detonator, so if there's any chance of him forcing the enemy flag carrier to cap the flag, it would be via his doing because he has that sticky detonator, maybe getting on top of the roof and then killing the flag carrier and that sort of thing. But this guy captures the flag, which is a dumb maneuver. He should not have capped the flag. As you can see here, Groms is going to run all the way back to his base, but they are the enemy team is up 1-0. Now... Again, right here, Groms is going to try to try to see if his teammates are available, and luckily his teammates are available um, to get 
the next flag. So what he's going to do is he's going to rush straight back. You could have capped it way earlier than this, but your one teammate is ready to get the next flag. And this is a good play, but it just needed to happen earlier than it did. You can see this guy's pushing up. Very lucky sticky detonator. You didn't need to turn to get that kill because your teammate already had control of that kill. You don't see this guy in Banshee Window. You get sticky detonated twice. That's how you lose all your shields here. You needed to have stayed below Banshee Window and and baited the flag with your sticky deck. Got one or two kills and then picked up the flag. But as it is, you pulled it back to your base, which is commendable as it is. So the score is tied one to one with you bringing in the second flag back to your base. Once again, your teammate is on top of the wreckage just above you and to your right. He drops down to help you with this guy, which is probably a good idea. Or maybe not, considering as he dies immediately there. But you guys are all going to die in the center here. And they're just going to be sitting on top of the flag recapture plate, which is right there on your screen. And once again, your teammate goes on top of the wreckage. One guy's in Banshee Window. I would rush Banshee Window right now and try to help your teammate. But you fake backwards towards your base. There's no need to do that. Your, only your flag carrier really needs to be in your base. Your flag carrier can alternate his position to come closer to you for defensive purposes or be ready to capture the flag and stay further back in the base. You get an okay trade here with the sticky debt, but it's not really uh, a good trade. You need to not be trading at this point. You need to be trying to stay alive in the center of the map. You get beam rifled by a camo sniper from Banshee Window. There's not much you can do about that, but your teammate is still staying alive in wreckage. I would really try to help that teammate out here. If you're trying to put these long range shots, you don't notice that the beam rifle has spawned to your right. You still don't notice it. You still don't notice it. You're pushing through the middle. You still don't notice it. I would have gone for that. You do notice the saw right here. But right here, you are way, way, way too passive with this guy. And then you are way too aggressive rushing in for the melee and getting just really, really punished for that. I would have just simply gone into the center wreckage, shot him, but not gone for the melee at all. Notice how you keep spawning on the side of your base like this. This is why you want to stay alive in the center of the map, because it's so much of a pain to keep rushing back to the center. You don't need to come back to your, to your base to kill this guy, because your teammate with the flag already has plenty of support. And even if the enemy player did grab the flag, there's no way they're getting it out of your base unless they have some significant help. Great sticky dead on that guy, and great job ignoring everything else, going for the sticky debt, and stopping this flag run. You stop the carrier, that's why this driver actually stops. He tries to get out and get the flag, but that's not going to happen as you punish them. And your teammates really need to take advantage of this. Push up, grab that beam rifle you just cat ran over and run to the center of the map. You're getting a lot of fire, but you strong side, looking downwards to make your head less visible from behind, which is a good idea. So right here, fire earlier at this guy, man. Fire earlier. You, you know he's coming up the lift. You saw him on your radar. You don't need to rush in for the melee here. You don't need to do that because your team, your, you need to let your teammates get those guys and stay behind your teammates because you have the objective, okay? They should be defending you, not you you going out and being a warrior. All right, here, I like your focus on this guy, but you get really easily like suppressed here. And you do stay alive slightly, which is good and kind of stay alive in the middle, but you kind of don't know what to do here. If you're a little confused, jump on, jump up on top of the let wreckage to your left there. Use that little jump. You end up rushing towards the center, and it's really not going to help you out that much, and you just end up dying and don't do much in the center. You're not going to be able to get a flag when you see that many dots in your radar in the center of the map. You do get an assist off that, which is, again, pretty lucky. Um, the enemy players are being a little too aggressive, but they are keeping a lot of pressure on your base right now, which is a good idea. Um, I would, your flight carrier should pull it more true with the right side of the base where you guys are spawning right here. You do switch to the uh, DMR at some points during this game and you do have a hard light shield equipped to your DMR. But unlike you say in your submission, you actually have a s pistol as your secondary, not a battle rifle. So right here, you need to be looking, uh, you, you notice that the beam rifle spawned and then disappeared, but you don't really pay much attention to that. And that's gonna come up later on. Uh, that happened very briefly there. It's going to come up later on and bite you in the butt. But this is the reason why I don't use the DMR, okay? Because it's not as powerful at long range like you just saw here. I would recommend loading out the light rifle and the battle rifle in the same class. The light rifle because of the four-shot kill when you're zoomed, which is really, really nice. Now right here, your teammate has the flag. There's no need to rush back into the base. There's no need to rush back into the base here. But unfortunately, you know that beam rifle that I just mentioned? you get punished and annihilated. Now, this guy should not have grabbed the flag. He should have turned around and beam rifled your teammate and not grabbed the flag because now he can't use his beam rifle. But as it is, the enemy team pushes up with this Gosshawk, but they're suppressed by your, your by you. 
Now this is a good job, good, really good shot from this player, and good use of the hard light shield here, because the enemy Gosshog Gunner does not notice that you stop using it, and you're able to get a few key shots and get two assists on these guys, but there's no reason to lift back into your base, okay? The score is two to, two to one, and you're about to get the third flag cap if you can control the center of the map. No reason to drive the Warthog outside the front of your base. Stay safely inside your base so you can get a gunner very safely here. There's no need to rush out like this and get yet another death. You're not going to do any good, okay? So you spawn once again on the side of the base. You need to be long range shooting these guys like crazy. Not the guy closest to your base, not him. The guy's in the center of the map, okay? Those guys are going to give you tr a lot of trouble. And again, well, one, I'm sorry, not again. But the main reason I don't use the hard light shield is because of what just happened to you. You pulled it up and it didn't work. Uh, that sometimes happens with a hard light shield. You have to pull it up long before your shields go dead, just like thruster packing. You got a thruster pack long before your shields go dead. You switch back to the thruster pack here, which is good. Now you get the melee on the flight carrier, but there's no need to lift up where you do. Don't lift up in the center like you do, man, because you're right on top of the capture plate, and boom, you accidentally capture. And the enemy team has full control of the center, and they're going to pull this flag all the way back to their base. Now, it's not too big of a deal, but you get melted straight up. You need to go to the right and jump on top of the wreckage so that you don't die as fast. You do, Again, do not notice the beam rifle that has spawned to your right. And you do kind of like, that enemy player is not going to do anything. You need to go after the flag carrier. Don't worry about the enemy player. He's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. Now right here, you need to turn earlier to your right to attack these guys. You need to recognize that your teammate already had that kill. You do a good job of backing up here. Don't get me wrong. You do a great job of backing up here. But then you charge out with almost no shield. You're about to have teammate support if you would have waited a few seconds. Watch as you respawn here. Like you just died here. You're going to respawn here. Look across the map at what your teammates just did. Your teammates killed off those last few people. Your teammate grabs the flag, rushes through Banshee Hallway, and your teammate is supporting him. If you had stayed there, your teammate 1JA1 wouldn't have died there, I don't think. And he would have been able to pull back. You're on top of wreckage right now, but you give up the position. You shouldn't have done that. You're just going to get annihilated. There's no point why you needed to drop there. There's no point whatsoever. Your whole purpose is defense here. You have the advantage. With a little less than three minutes remaining, you have the advantage. You, If you cap this flag, you, it's, you're going to be up four flag caps to two, which is really, really advantageous here. Good job uh, going back and attacking this guy in your base. But you already have teammates here who have the beam rifle, so you're going to go ahead and go grab the flag in just a second. And uh, that's a good job, but you have a lot of teammates surrounding you in your base right now. And this is kind of okay because you're really just burning down the timer, waiting for the game to end. So you can cap the final flag cap right before the timer ends. You have 2 minutes and 12 seconds remaining. So uh, it's okay that you're staying all in your base, but your teammates need to be pushing out to the side so that they can, again, shoot people as they're coming into your base so that when they enter the base, they're already weak. If you're all in the base, it's easy to get grenaded and swarmed from the side. Now right here, your teammate does unfortunately beam rifle you in the back. And you end up picking up an assist for uh, that guy who just charged into the base. Now it's good that the flag is over here on the side. Your teammate grabs it. But you need to be paying attention to the red dots on your radar right now. Um, it's really unfortunate that you don't use your thruster pack here. You need to use your thruster pack here. After you toss that first grenade, use your thruster pack. Go to the left, m make him waste a shot, pop out again, throw the grenade, and back down again. You again forget the beam rifle and forget that the uh, Gosshog is still sitting in front of your base. That guy's not dead yet. And you do a headlong rush across the map for this enemy flag carrier. There's no need to do this because there's only one minute remaining. Go to the flag reset point below Banshee Bridge. There's no need to go for this flag whatsoever because even if they cap it, there's still one flag down. There's no need to die here because you're going to end up respawning all the way back at your base. Luckily, the enemy team is dumb and doesn't control the center bridge before they cap, and this guy washes headlong across the map, but you get some really, really uh, choke. You really, really choke here. Unfortunately, this guy is going to charge in, but if you cap this flag, you're going to be up four to three against these guys. Now this guy really, really punishes you. You probably should have thrown a grenade before you engage that player, but your teammate, once again, is hanging out really well among the wreckage. A one J A one. I don't know who he was in your team, but he's doing a really good job of that. You need to go back to your base, man. 30 seconds remaining. N don't wait for a new flag. The flag in your base is the flag winning cap. 
you didn't need to cap this flag at all. Okay, capping this flag gives the team an enemy team an opportunity to grab the flag and push back to their base. Now, as it is, you can burn down the remaining seconds of the timer because you are ahead. So the game is not going to go into overtime because you're not tied. The game over only goes into two minute overtime when you're tied. So you're going to automatically win this game four flag caps to two, unlike what you said in your submission, five clap, flag claps to two. Wow, getting tongue tied there. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this gameplay review. Thank you, uh, Grom, for submitting this gameplay review. I really hope it helped you a lot. This is a very new editing style I'm trying out. It, the gameplay was 15 minutes long, so I wanted to make, make sure this video wasn't 45 minutes long, trying to pause it every single place and review everything. If you want to submit your own Halo 4 gameplay, check out the link in the description or the video linked in the top right hand corner via the annotation that will take you to the video where you can learn how to submit your own gameplay films to me if you want to check out the playlist of all my gameplay reviews you can watch all of them check out the annotation in the top left hand corner or the link is in the description as well guys thank you for watching this gameplay review thank you again for groms for submitting it and i'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever end up recording peace